I will. This is my lab notebook from 1996. It's a little blurry, but if you read here, you can tell what I was working on. Inventions of epochs and weights. Is that suggesting the same neural networks? You, you can see, this is just pieces of code cut out with scissors and glued into my notebooks. You can see what I had trouble with. That says, here's what works. And there's a little arrow pointing over there to the line of code. And this is the output I got. So that was 1996. I knew what I was doing, what I had trouble with, and what my output was. I've done experiments six months ago. I can't even find the directory where my code is. Right? So I think actually I've gone backwards as far as reproducibility goes, <laughs> but I think there might be hope for the future. I'll tell you why. So what I'm going to say basically is that when it comes to reproducibility, we're not being very nice to each other, but we should be nice to each other, and I'll show you why. So this is Kurt Vonnegut. He died about 10 years ago. Uh, he was in World War II. He fought the Nazis, went through the bombing of Dresden, and then became one of the most influential writers for people of my age. And one of the things he's famous for saying is, he left that word, God damn it, babies, you've got to be kind. And I think we're not being kind to each other show you some evidence. So here are some publications about reproducibility. Here's a good one. Rigor mortis, how sloppy science creates worthless cures, crushes hopes, and wastes billions. From The Economist, super influential magazine amongst smart anglophones, how science goes wrong. Now, native speakers of English, when you start a sentence with the word how, what does that imply? Nancy, you're a native speaker. <laughs> the sentence this in, in Euroland too, just because I'm a native speaker. <laughs> yeah, Nancy, Nancy the native Euro speaker, I knew that. Nancy, the sentence what how sloppy <laughs> science creates worthless cures. What does that imply that science does? that it creates worthless <laughs> cures. How about how science goes wrong? <laughs> Tiffany, you're a native speaker. What does that imply? <laughs> <laughs> science goes wrong. It implies that science goes wrong, right? So. That's called an alternative fact. Sorry? It's an alternative fact. <laughs> it's an alternative fact. Um, <laughs> actually, this is not an alternative fact, but. Oops. <laughs> Well, we do kind of go wrong, right? But, 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 but. Intent matters. That means that what you plan to do is important. And that's true whether you're the president of the United States and there's an issue of obstruction of justice. And that's true whether you're a scientist and there's an issue of non-reproducible research. So here, you. Here are titles that I think suggest that our intent is bad, that when we have non-reproducible research, it is for a reason, a bad reason. How many scientists fabricate and falsify research? What does how many imply? I think that the number is not zero. Uh, <laughs> how about this? How trustworthy is the scientific literature in industrial and organizational psychology. Would you think that the implication is very trustworthy? <laughs> Probably not. So, um, if you like data, we're NLP people. So I took 11 non-randomly sampled titles of scientific papers and uh, news stories and a conference on research integrity at which I was asked to speak on this subject. And I used a, a library in R to classify this, the sentiment of those titles. So from a scale of minus three to three, here's what I got. 
One of them was classified as positive. Here's the title. A sharp rise in retractions prompts calls for reform. As a native speaker, I think that's really <laughs> negative, actually. So, point being, we are not based on each other. We know there's a reproducibility problem in science. We know there's a huge one in natural language processing. Uh, the, 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 list of, the list of papers showing non-generalizability of language, uh, general English language processing results in the biomedical domain that I put in a recent paper was so long that one of the reviewers said it was ludicrous. Raise your hand if anyone else had received a review that contained the word ludicrous. I'm seeing big heroes with some very, very heavily published scientists here. So indeed, I, I, we do have a reproducibility problem. When we talk about reproducibility, there are some implications. Either you lied or you were sloppy. I don't think we should be that mean to each other. And I'm going to try to convince you that by telling you the story of one of my own research product, projects. Why me? Because we know intent matters here. And my intent, I think, is clearly <coughs> for the following reason. So you don't have to read the titles of these. Just know that there are a lot and that they're all papers about reproducibility that go back to 2008. The most recent one is from Nancy's uh, journal, um, Language Resources and Evaluation. I'm an associate editor there, and part of my remit is reproducibility. So in theory, you should figure probably I really tried to do reproducible research, given that I've been publishing about it since some of you were in high school. <coughs> So the project I'm going to talk about is an annotation project, because we're here at Blah, a linked annotation hackathon. And I also picked this one because I really, really tried to make this repeatable. And it happened that I had students who needed to do an annotation project, so they tried to repeat it. Why not? It was sitting right there in GitHub. And I had used R Markdown to document everything I did, because I read things like, how can software tools make our research more reproducible? I did everything that you're supposed to do on this project. <clears throat> well, then I got an email from Tiffany. Kevin, there are some files missing. So I replaced the files, and I got another email from Tiffany. Hi, Kevin, trying to work on this right now. I can't download one of the files. It's corrupted. So I fixed that. And then I got another email from Tiffany. Um, <laughs> well, the data is file is not in the repository, so I fixed that. They're not named. <laughs> Excuse me, what I thought they were supposed to be, so I fixed that. The file, the file four minutes, no actually input out. This, this is like what we spend 80% of our lives doing as computational people, is messing around with file formats. <laughs> ah, more missing files for a script I never should have put into a repository. So, uh, I mean, you can trust my intent, I think. Clearly I care about reproducibility. I did everything you're supposed to do, and it was not a repeat experiment. Now this hurt. It hurt in my heart, right? But there was a reward for this. It came out well for me in the following way. Because then I got this email from Tiffany saying, hey Kevin, I'm working on calculating the inter-rater agreement for my annotations and noticed something in the code I wanted to ask you about. <coughs> blah blah code 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 in our markdown. It looks like what is labeled as craft was actually run on mimic data and not on the craft annotations. Or maybe I am missing something. No, I am. I had a bug in my code. But I was rewarded because before I submitted the paper, oh, sorry, after the paper was published, <coughs> no, not that much. After the paper was submitted and accepted, but before it was published, Tiffany found the bug. 
And thank God it did not change the conclusions. Yeah, the bug I found the night before I gave the talk, that was a different story, <laughs> but that's the subject of the outline paper that we be giving this soon. Mm -hmm. So this is the good thing. If you really, if you really care about reproducibility, you can publish papers about your bugs. People love to hear about it, too, so it's a really good thing. So I actually got a reward for, for paying attention to replicability issue. I didn't repeat it, but it led to Tiffany finding a bug in my code before I published it, and it was totally cool. So you would like to do something about this. You would like to write papers about your bugs, too, because why not get two publications for the price of one? LRE, Nancy's Journal of Language Resources and Evaluation, is encouraging submissions, submissions on reproduction. Specifically note that the innovation criterion is not you did something new. Frankly, at this point, if you try to replicate something, that is innovative in our world. So, again, we should be kind to each other. Because um, although we have been doing tons of non-reproducible research, we haven't been doing it on purpose, and we are all in the same boat. That means that we're all experiencing the same situation or condition. Um, if I've got this problem, I bet a lot of other people in this room do too. Not because I'm smart, but because I really, really try hard. And um, so it's me, it's you, it's probably all of us. But I think we can get back to something as good as this, as we try hard. Thank you very much.